So as part of BW ABAP training, what all we will be seeing? Let us see the syllabus uh, in detail. So entire course, the BW ABAP course has been structured into three different main sections. Okay, the very first section. In the very first section, we will talk about the fundamentals of ABAP. Okay, in this section, I will make sure that you are comfortable with all the basic syntaxes which is used in BW ABAP or in general ABAP. Why? Because you should be comfortable with ABAP programming language, first thing. And obviously as a candidate from non-programming background or not uh, in touch with the programming from couple of years, so you guys will have that fear. Okay, if I go and do some changes in the routine or generic extractor or in some user exit, what will happen? By mistake, if I do something, it may impact something else, correct? All those fears you will be having. So in the fundamentals, we'll be seeing how to create a simple ABAP program, uh, what are different data types supported by ABAP programming language, how to declare a variable, how to declare a work area, how to declare an internal table, how to use arithmetic operator, logical operator, conditional operator to perform arithmetic operation, logical operation, also conditional operators such as if statement, else statement, case statement, all those things we will see in detail. We will also correlate that with your the BW use cases which you have already aware. As a BW consultant, you might be already aware and given a requirement to your ABAP counterpart or ABAP colleagues, right? So we will take those scenarios. For example, in your data source level, you have first name, middle name and last name as three separate columns. We will be seeing how to concatenate the value of three different columns into single field of your target. So in order to do that, either you can achieve field level routine or end routine uh, based on the use case. We will see how exactly we can implement the same during our fundamental sessions. All right? And we will also see how to convert things into upper case, how to convert things into lower case or the value stored in a particular field or value coming in a particular field to lower case, upper case. Also, we will see something called offset operation. So, with this, you will be comfortable with basics. Once we complete this topic, right, we will move on to something called internal tables and work area. As you are aware, in entire SAP, the entire data is stored, the application data is stored in backend database tables, correct? So, even our BW data, whether it's say, Cube data, DSO data, EDSO data, or even PSA also will have its own backend database table associated, right? So, we will see how to pull the data from database and store it in something called internal table and work area. These are runtime objects used to store data in a table format, more than one row, more than one column, okay? We will also see not only the declaration, we will also see how to process the data, how to make use of loop statement, how to make use of loop inside a loop, read inside a loop, okay? We will see all these things in detail and also we will see when to use loop inside a loop, when to use read inside a loop, what is the importance of that, how to handle one is to one relationship, one is to n relationship, all those things. Okay. Once we are done with that, we will move on to a concept called modularization, which is an optional session. Generally, Core Vapor will focus on this, but in my training, this will be covered because modularization is all about making your code look simpler and reusability of the code. Okay. So, we will see the modularization concept and this concept will help you to even uh, do the reverse engineering of the existing SAP standard programs or if there is any ABAP report uh, or Z ABAP report created by any ABAP consultant, right? You will be in a position to analyze your cell. Okay. And also post completion of this, you will see function models in detail. You will see how to create a function model from the scratch. You will also see how to call the function module what we have created in another SC38 program or in another function module or in the user exit. Why function model concept is very very important because SAP has given more than 5000 or 6000 plus standard function module each perform a specific task right and even SAP they themselves are calling these function module are reusing this function module whenever there is a need. So that's the reason we will be seeing what exactly is the function module or how to create a reusable function module, how to implement the logic, all those things and also we will see debugging of these function modules. So once we are done with this topic, our entire fundamental part is done. The next section we will talk about the BW related ABAP concept in your source system such as ECC, CRM or SRM system. The very first and important topic is generic extractor based on function model. As you are aware, most of the cases we will have to go ahead and uh, create a custom generic extractor and custom generic extractor can be created in three different ways. 
one is based on table or view based extractor infoset based extractor or function model based extractor the last case the function model based extractor or in order to implement function model based extractor you have to have a ABAP knowledge correct by this time we already have all the fundamental syntax knowledge which can now apply to achieve the generic extractor based on function model requirement again there we will see multiple scenario how to extract the data which will pull a data from a single table or how to create a generic extractor which will pull data from multiple tables and again in the multiple tables we will see the relationship like uh, 1 is to n relationship, 1 is to 1 relationship, n is to m relationship, how to handle all these things okay and also since it is a generic extractor nothing is being taken care by SAP such as if at all you are passing an info package selection or RSA3 selection right system will not handle even for that also we have to implement a logic we will see how to implement a logic to filter the data based on info package selection or RSA3 selection. With that our generic extractor part is done. Moving on we will move to something called enhancement of standard extractor and again this is one of the very very important concept correct. So already there will be an ETL flow exist in your BW system for that ETL flow maybe business request you to add a couple of custom fields or standard fields which is not there in the existing standard extractor. So we will see how can we enhance the existing standard extractor by adding a couple of additional columns requested by business. We will also see how to implement the logic using user exit approach and baddy approach. There are two different approaches as I said. User exit approaches are the conventional approach which is being uh, used by majority of the consultant prior to our BW 7.x version or ECC 6.0 version but now with the latest version we have something called baddies or business add-ins given by SAP. So we will see how to implement the logic both using conventional user exit approach and also baddie approach and again baddies have its own advantage it works on OOPS concept we will discuss all those things in detail. Okay. With this our source system related BW ABAP requirement are covered now we will move on to BW system in the BW system what are different requirement we get with respect to BW ABAP objects the very first concept is routines routines in case of your BW transformations correct in the introductory session we will see what is routine and why we go for routine what are different types of routine and also by the end of that session you will be in a position to decide given a particular requirement you will be in a position to judge okay this is the kind of routine which I can go for to achieve this requirement you will have that confidence okay because anybody can write a code but you need to also have a hold that way to write a code to achieve a specific requirement correct you will be to that confidence level once we are done with that we will see each and every routine in detail start routine end routine expert routine field level routine also we will see how to do the lookup like what exactly is a lookup while loading data from one source to another target you will be pulling data from active data table of another DSO or P table of your master data how to do that all those things we will see followed by we will also see how to enhance the performance of existing code in your routines why because right there might be many uh, existing routines which might be there in existing ETL flow which might be taking more time means the data load between that uh, source and a target might be taking lot of time we will also discuss what are the best practices what are the do's and don'ts how can we improve the performance of existing routine in detail okay we will also see how to implement the info package routine we will also see how to implement a DTP routine to achieve the DTP filter or info package filter programmatically or dynamically once we are done with that the next part which is pending is uh, the BEX part in the BEX part first we will see how to implement a BEX selection screen variable values or how to implement a logic to populate values to your BEX selection screen variables here a variable as you guys are aware can take a single value several single value range of values range we will be using for your YTD report WTD report MTD report from value to value we will see how to implement the logic in detail for each of these cases we will also see I step what is the importance of I step when the I step value will be 0 when I step value will be 1 when I step value will be 2 once we are done with that we will go to the very last topic with respect to our training that is restriction of F4 values in case of big selection screen so as you all are aware we will have a big selection screen for example you have a 
zero unit of measure field as your selection field. You might have implemented a variable or manual input variable. So when the user press value help that or F4 button, right? Generally, what happens? It will display all the unique value from your underlying info provider or from the master data based on your info object setting, correct? For example, it will show centimeter, millimeter, pound, each piece. Uh, uh, ton all those things, but for that report you wanted to show only kg and pound. How can we restrict that? For this again, there is one uh, baddy given by SAP. We will be seeing how to implement this baddy, which is based on OOPS concept. Okay, with this, our entire BWA web training will be done. And one more important thing is the best practices and debugging will not be taking as a last session from day one. If you are creating a, a particular program, we will see how to debug that program. And also, if we are writing a syntax in one way, we'll also discuss is there any alternative way we can implement the syntax so that you will get to know the difference and you'll also get to know why one syntax is better than other. We'll discuss in detail. The motto is you should be comfortable with debugging and best practice by the time we complete at least half of our training, right? And also, I can assure you whatever I am going to teach in our training, if you can practice at least once, whatever been discussed in the training, you will be able to handle given 10 very very complex BWA app requirement, at least 9 requirement you will be able to handle, 9 very complex requirement you will be able to handle without even asking doubt to any of your peer team members or even to me. So this is the overall training, hopefully I have covered uh, the syllabus or the course content of SAP BWA app in this video. If you still have any doubts, you can always reach out to me. If you are looking for online training on the same, you can always reach out to me and my mail ID that is venugopal mn1988 at the rate gmail.com. You can also call me on my mobile number that is plus 91 followed by 973 Thank you so much and have a good one.